Thank you for joining us. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky has visited the southern Kherson region to inspect evacuation operations. Large parts of the area are underwater after a dam was breached on Tuesday. Zelensky praised rescue crews and discussed getting clean water and other relief supplies into the disaster zone. Thousands of people have been forced from their homes since the Novokakovka dam was damaged. Zelensky has called for more international help and from aid agencies. Now, the Novokakovka dam links the banks of the Dnipro River held by Russia to the south and Ukraine to the north. Kyiv and Moscow have accused each other of deliberately attacking the reservoir. The governor of Kherson says about 600 square kilometers are underwater. Kyiv says 32 percent of of it is in Ukrainian controlled territory and that the remaining 68 percent is in Russian occupied territory. Let's go live to Al Jazeera's Charles Stratford who's in Kherson Forest in the affected area. So the president Zelensky has visited this area. What did he see and what's the latest Charlie on uh, evacuation efforts where you are? Well, as you rightly say, yeah, evacuation efforts are ongoing. Um, President Zelensky here congratulating and thanking emergency services. The situation here, though, is still dire. Um, we've spoken to volunteers. We've actually been out on a boat this morning as well, and we've seen some of the people still either trapped or refusing to leave their buildings. A lot of elderly, a lot of infirm. We've seen volunteers handing out uh, water to people trapped in buildings. Um, We've seen a lot of people also, some of the injured, brought out on the ramp behind me and put into ambulances. I mean, you can imagine, it's three days now, almost since this, it's the third day since the, uh, since the dam was destroyed. So um, for the vulnerable, for the weak, for the elderly, they may not have had access to water and sufficient food. We've also heard, though, this morning quite a lot of shelling, a lot more than we heard yesterday. We understand the majority of it to be outgoing. The military here, very nervous that um, Russian forces across the river in Russian-occupied areas could mount an attack. But there is an understanding that, um, that, that on the Russian-controlled side as well, there, there are also ongoing evacuations. There are big fears here also about uh, the availability of drinking water. We've seen tanks, water tanks being brought in to distribute water to the people that are affected. But, yeah, this evacuation effort is seemingly a still a long way from completion. And in our estimation, certainly, it seems as if the river has risen in certain areas overnight. Um, it looks to be approximately the similar kind of level to in this area that it was yesterday. We estimate that in some areas, you know, it's, it's still around sort of four metres deep, could actually be deeper. So, uh, yeah, as I say, the situation here is still dire. You can see people being brought in on a boat there. Um, as this mammoth effort to get people who want to leave their buildings out. We've been looking at the initial stages of this relief campaign, this huge great evacuation effort, and the suffering that this city has endured. And this is our package. There is a sadness that pervades these flooded streets. Soon after Russia's invasion, Kherson was attacked and then occupied by Russian forces. And now large areas of the city are underwater. Many of the people who returned after the Ukrainian army retook Kherson late last year are being evacuated from their homes again. Everything was demolished there. It's frightening. The two-story houses have been swept away and the summer houses are floating down the river. There is no one there anymore. Ukraine accuses Russia of destroying the Kharkovka Dam on the Dnipro River and causing this. A terrorist attack to prevent an advance across the Dnipro River towards Russian-occupied Crimea, says Kyiv. Russia says Ukraine is responsible and is also moving thousands of people to safety on the opposite Russian-occupied side of the river. This is one of many streets here in Kherson city completely flooded. We understand that there were hundreds if not thousands of people that were living here until this dam was destroyed. And now they've all been forced to leave. There are fears about mines that may have been dislodged and carried into the city by the flood surge. Volunteers prepare boats to help 
in the search for more trapped people. Cages are packed with panicking cats. We were shouting and banging on windows. There are no people, only animals. The water there is almost over the signposts. Evacuation buses are full of the young and old. They take with them a few belongings and their pets. It's very hard to explain. Honestly, it's still hard to speak, very hard. I don't know where I'm going. We were taken out and now we're on our own. This city had already experienced some of the worst suffering in this war. Now, amid the floodwaters and destruction, its people are forced to endure even more. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Kherson. Charlie, a very powerful report there of how people on both sides have been affected. Now, we've heard from uh, Ukrainian officials, they've accused the Russians of uh, firing at emergency crews who've been rescuing uh, and trying to evacuate people uh, there. What more can you tell us about this and what's the latest on fighting elsewhere in Ukraine? Yeah, we've heard similar reports from the Ukrainian authorities over the last couple of days that um, they're accusing Russian forces of shelling areas near to where the evacuations are happening. Certainly, we haven't seen anything like that in the period of time that we've been here, and there has been no real chatter about that since. But as I say, we've heard um, a lot of outgoing shelling, certainly um, on this side, over the last couple of hours, and there are concerns here by the military that... Russian forces may respond. With respect to what's happening in the east along that 1,000 or so kilometre front line, the east and the south, we're hearing unconfirmed reports of progress that have been made by Ukrainian forces in the last couple of days south of Bakhmut, having been halted by what's being reported as Russian reinforcements. Of course, Bakhmut was declared in full control by the Russians last month. Um, we're hearing, though, that, uh, yes, as I say, progress has been halted in the south of the mm. Ukrainian mood. And then on the contrary to that, there are reports that the Ukrainians are making gains to the north of Bakhmut. More importantly, arguably, there's a lot of pro-Russian military blogger chatter about what they describe as a huge intensification of fighting and firing artillery being fired south of Zaporizhia by Ukrainian forces at towns like Tokmak, Meliotopol, as the expected um, counter-offensive is believed to now be beginning. Mm. Uh, this wouldn't be inconceivable, as certainly military analysts will tell you that it's very much in Ukraine's interest to push south of Zaporizhia in order to be able to get to the Azov Sea, in order to cut off this land bridge between Russian-occupied um, Donetsk and Lugansk and Russian-occupied Crimea. But as you can imagine, all eyes are really focused, seemingly at the moment, on this huge crisis that's unfolding in this city and thousands of square kilometres in this region. Charlie, thank you very much for the update. Charles Stratford, live for us there in Kherson, Ukraine.